What's going on everyone? Good morning. So this morning, it's a Saturday, it's nice outside. I'm off to go officiate track and field. For those that aren't familiar, you would think of official for track and field is technically like a referee. If you think of it in terms of other sports, such as like basketball or football, but I'm off to officiate track and field. Um, for those that are familiar, there's different levels of track and field. There's high school, there's collegiate, and most people are familiar with the Olympics, the highest level out there, there's world championships. But again, I'm an official for track and field. I mostly do high school and some collegiate. I'm in the state of Connecticut, so depending on where you live and where you're situated, the organization that you join is different. So for us in Connecticut, I'm part of what's known as the CIAC. It's the governing body for all athletics in the state of Connecticut for high school, middle school, I believe, and lower um, and elementary school. But that's the organization that you join. So for track and field, again, there's different events. Most people are familiar with track events such as the 100 meters, the 200 meters, but there's also the field events, which some people are familiar, such as a lot of people know about the shot put, the javelin, the discus, the hammer, what else, um, high jump, pole vault, but there's multiple different events. So for me, I've been an official for give or take under a year. I only signed up last year as, I never did track and field in high school, to be honest with you. There's some people who become officials that after their careers have ended or they were track and field athletes or they still compete even to this day because there's championship for masters. There's people the other day, a lady that I believe that was like 98 set the world record for the fastest mile. So there's different reasons why people join to become a track and field official. I personally, like I said, never did track and field in high school. I'm a runner, but it was something I was always interested in. I like being out and checking out these different events. I get to meet cool people, get to see the progression in these athletes. So if you're interested in becoming a track and field official, it's a little bit different, again, in what state you live because there's different governing bodies. But overall, everything is governed by what's known as the um, USATF, known as US Track and Field. So there's the different rule books, again, depending on what you're officiating so high school is a little bit different than if you're officiating collegiate meets or anything above that for example one of the biggest differences is that for high school meets everything that you measure is in feet and inches versus collegiate and up everything that you measure is in meters if you're interested in joining or doing it what you do is you go online you sign up for a membership you get in contact with whatever governing body in your state officiates it so like i said for connecticut it's the caic you reach out to them you're required to take a quiz online you actually do have to take a quiz to make sure that you understand the rule book because it's a little bit confusing if you've never done it before like myself you can you, you're supposed to take a test you can retake the test i believe as many times as you need to until you pass i end up having to take the test two different times because the first time many of the rules were a little bit confusing to me because again i'd never done track and field so there's a lot more to it so today i'll kind of try to take you to the journey see what goes on in a track meet try to talk to some officials see why they joined what got them interested in doing track and field some of the obstacles because as we go through today you'll see that a lot of the people that are officials are older than me most of the time i happen to be the youngest person on an officiating crew so like i mentioned i'll try to take you guys through the journey of being a track official or what goes through the meet throughout the day so when you first get to most meets officials have to check in as well as all the athletes so all the different implements as far as the hammers have to be weighed the javelins have to be weighed because again everything has to meet a certain requirement for example for the shot put it has to weigh a certain amount if it doesn't like for example i believe again men's is 12 pounds women's is 8.8 .8, i believe but if it's under that we confiscate it you can't use it during the meet if it weighs slightly over you're perfectly fine to use it so like i mentioned when you come to a track meet all the athletes have to implement or weigh in the implements anywhere from shot put discus javelin if certain if anything comes underweight you mind explaining what happens if an item doesn't meet the requirements in a track meet such as yep. if your shot put is underweight if it's underweight, any of the implements are underweight, then we keep them until the end of the meet. But everything, but something can be overweight. For example, yes. if I, I forget, if I remember correctly, high school men's shot put is 12, 
12 pounds. Yes. But okay. if it's over that 12 pounds, they can still use it. Anything under that 12 pounds, Correct. you confiscate it. Correct. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. So today, the specific event that they have me doing is known as discus. A discus is more or less, if you think about it, probably for people, it's easier to think of it kind of like a frisbee, but not entirely. So a discus can be made out of essentially multiple different materials, wood, plastic, composite. But again, it has to meet a certain requirements as far as how much it weighs, the diameter of it, the radius. So how discus more or less, more or less works is that people stand in that circle right there depending again if you're in high school or collegiate high school it's a minute from when your name is called up to initiate your throw and to throw the item whereas in college it's 30 seconds but again you stand in that circle and within a minute you have to throw your item what's known as a foul or your throw won't count is if you step outside of that circle before your throw has landed if you exit out of the back half of that circle because again the circle split in half so if you look inside of the circle there's a middle mark so where that middle mark is you have to step out the back half of the circle you can enter the circle any way you would like but you have to exit out of the back half of the circle and again for your throw to count your discus has to land within these two white lines what are known as sector lines Again, your discus can land anywhere from, again, high school, it's feet and inches. So depending on the individual, your throw can be as short as 10 feet, where some people can throw it further, anywhere from like 70 to 100 feet. I forget what the record is in Connecticut, but again, as long as your throw lands within those white lines, it counts. Anything outside of the white lines, it doesn't count. If you step out of the circle in any way before your throw has landed, it doesn't count. If you exit out the front half of the circle before your shot has landed, then it doesn't count. So when a flight is about to start after they've had a warm up period, each flight for an event has a warm up period. That warm up period, as far as actual time, depends on the games committee. The time can vary from anywhere from 10 all the way to 30 minutes. Again, it's up to the games committee of that particular meet to designate how long competitors have for warm-up but once a flight is about to start you'll call up all the competitors for example you'll say flight one of discus gather up you'll do a bit of a roll call make sure that the competitors on your list are there because sometimes there's competitors competing in other events that might that might have to go back and forth say you might be throwing shot put and javelin but your flight for javelin hasn't started yet but your flight for shot puts about to start so you'll get scratches also where a coach might take a competitor off your list for a particular flight or they might move them to a different flight you'll also get athletes that decide they don't want to do a particular flight because due to injury or they just don't want to do that particular event anymore so you do a roll call you'll also give them instructions again the instructions are different for every event because for discus for most throwing events including hammer discus javelin well, not javelin because javelin's a runway, but as far as discus, hammer, and shot put, you enter that circle any way you would like. You can enter the circle any way, but you have to make sure that you leave out of the back half of the circle because if you leave from the front half, whether you're implemented, has landed or not, we will call a foul. Then your attempt will not count. At the same time, you have to wait for your implement to actually land in the field in those sector lines before you can leave the circle. So if you if your implement is still in the air and you've already exited the circle, then that's considered a foul. Your attempt will not count. And then once we go through the instructions, then we'll start the competition. I will say that throwing first up is such and such individual. We'll call him Jake. Jake is up. Then I will say the second person throwing John is on deck and then Dylan is on hold the third person then you'll keep doing that as you go through the flight Five feet, five inches. 
So just to kind of wrap up the day, we're leaving the meet, or at least I'm leaving the meet. The meet's still going on. There's still a couple track events going on. But as far as what they had me doing today, I was doing the men's and women's discus. Took a bit of time because we had what's known as flights. So in each flight, at least for this meet, in each flight, there was at least a minimum of 10 competitors. For the women's, there was three flights. So there was a total of at least 30 women, if not more. And each person got four throws or four attempts. For the boys, it was a little bit longer. There was five flights in total, but again, they probably averaged to about anywhere from nine to 11 throwers. So each one of those boys also got four throws as well. So the meets can take quite a bit of time, depending on what necessarily your event you're doing, it takes quite a bit of time. Um, I think one thing that we haven't mentioned is pay for meets. It varies because some high school, pe high school meets pay very little while some pay higher but most of the time collegiate meets typically pay the best or pay a lot more or tend to pay a little bit more like for example for this meet where i worked i've been here for six hours regardless of whether i was here for four hours or six hours i was paid a hundred dollars for the day so again it varies because like i said a lot of time this job is typically done by people that are retired or people that have the time like i mentioned i wanted to go and get some feedback from other officials but there were only two other certified officials here today and then their events got done before mine was over, so I didn't get a chance to actually ask them any questions. So while it's fresh in my head and the day is over, as far as the track meet's concerned, and I am finally arrived home, I will say go through some of the pros and some of the cons, at least for me, in being a track official. Um, I'll say some of the pros I mentioned earlier, some of the pros is seeing the progression of some of these athletes, especially if you've been doing this over a period of time, because you'll see a lot of the same athletes at various meets, especially like I mentioned, depending on where you're situated, because like Connecticut, uh, especially the collegiate meet, you'll see many of the same athletes because some of the meets I've worked back in April, I've seen a lot of the same school, Southern Connecticut State, UConn. Uh, Central Connecticut State, University of Albany also comes down to a few of the meets that we've done. So that's one of the pros. You'll see the progression of these athletes. Like I mentioned, you'll meet some interesting people. What else is another pro? It's a good side hustle if you have the opportunity or you have the time to do it. Because I will say one of the cons though of being a track official, especially like I mentioned, the meets can take quite a bit of time. Like today, I left my house, if I remember correctly, around 840 and we didn't start the meet until 9 I believe 940 ish and then we finally finished doing all the eight flights between the three girls and the five boys at four o'clock so it can take a bit of time depending on how many competitors you have again this was a high school meet so it took almost about six hours but it, it is now 6 p.m and I'm just arriving home so like I said you need to have the time to be able to do or commit to it for a full day Another con that I will say necessarily is sometimes the pay. It's not necessarily the amount of the pay, but when you actually get paid, because depending, again, meets, some meets will pay you cash. Like, uh, for example, today's meet, I got paid cash, which isn't an issue. But other meets, if you're working collegiate um, meets, you'll end up having to wait a bit because most of the time you won't be paid until after the end of the season because you're going through... I don't want to say you're going through bureaucracy, um, especially for universities. They have different departments and you'll have to go through the different departments. You'll have to wait to be paid because, like I mentioned, there are meets that I've done since April and it's about to be the middle of March. And I still necessarily haven't seen payment for those meets that I've done. I will eventually get paid, but be careful because there are I've heard stories where people have been stiffed on pay. Organizations never want to have a reputation of not paying officials because, it, because because then at that point it makes it harder for other officials to want to work there because like I said it's a relatively tight knit community like I said there's a shortage of officials overall in all areas whether it's high school collegiate different states so it's not that hard for word to travel around that such and such place hasn't paid you or such and such place will stiff you or it's difficult, the staff there is difficult. So I will say that it's not all that difficult for word to get around that an institution or a specific place won't pay you. So I will say be careful and make sure that the organization that you work for, the organization that you go to has your back. 
thank you guys for watching definitely appreciate it so hopefully you were able to learn some of the pros and cons about being a track official you were able to learn about the different events that occur during a track meet both the field events as well as the track events themselves feel free to subscribe feel free to throw out suggestions for different jobs and careers that are out there the more unique the better so like the program is called joe gets a job it doesn't necessarily mean i'm gonna get that particular job but let's see what's out there let's build this community so other people are able to see what unique careers and what unique opportunities are out there because there's nothing wrong with not having found your niche at a particular point in life so let's build this up together and see what careers are out there